Yes! Yeah! Three letters for this bike. F-U-N. She is fun. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm John over the Project Northeast. And we're up here at Highland Mountain Bike Park. And we're doing another bike review video. And on this video, I've come to realize over the years that I've been really missing a category that you know i've never really had because it's like those unicorn bikes that you're like oh you know the one bike that can do it all um and i figured something out i'm not a one bike guy i'm not a two bike guy i'm a three bike guy um so today we're up here with the brand new 2023 i think it is fuel ex the generation six fuel ex um, which is a 140 mil rear travel, 150 front travel. And in the static position, it's a 64 and a half degree head angle um, trail slayer. So I'm up here at Highland. There's gonna be two different parts to this video because it technically kind of blends the lines between a trail bike and an enduro bike. And we're gonna be doing two separate sections of this video. One is gonna be, obviously it's closing day at Highland Mountain Bike Park. We're gonna do how it performs downhill here and then we're gonna do uh, part two of this video, which is gonna be at the local trail system. So these are the initial impressions. I haven't even ridden the bike yet, so let's go up. You'll get my initial impression impressions from the first run ever on this bike. I'm still even, you know, like breaking in the brakes on it. Um, and big thanks and shout out to the Wheelhouse NH. Um, bike shop up in Claremont, New Hampshire, who provided this bike for me to be able to ride um, and do a demo and do a review video for you guys. Um, so let's get started. Let's get into it. All right. This is the first run on this bike. I haven't done anything to it other than set up the suspension stock. It's freaking muddy as hell. Closing day at Highland, but I wanted to get up here and at least do a video. I wanted to at least get some initial impressions of how it rides. Stock form on some downhill runs. First run initial impressions. It's pretty plush. for a 140 uh, bike. Jumps good, feels light. Even though on the scale, it's not exactly like super light. I'll go over that in the end of the video, how much it weighs and all that garbage. Feels pretty progressive. I think it's in the progressive stance right now with the shock mount. We'll go over that later as well. I wanted it to be in the progressive stance though for the bike that it is. You know, I don't plan on running that coil on this thing anyway. Jumps good so far. Stock settings. Feel very pretty confident so far. Alright, lap two. I'm gonna take it down to tech. Stay out of that friggin' mud. Alright. I don't trust these tires yet. I've never ridden these tires other than demoing a bike, so. Slicker than snot today. It's hard to really charge with this bike, but. Yeah. 
so far though, the one thing I've noticed right off the bat is how good these XT brakes are. Holy crap. Brand new out of the box and they, uh, I hear everybody else's brakes squealing. Not these things, these are silent. And it's soaking wet today. I seriously got flat already. You gotta be kidding me. Oh, well, that didn't last long. Second run and uh, we have a flat on the Team Issue tubeless ready tire running 32 PSI. Ah, oh, man. All right, it's gonna be a long walk out. Found the culprit. So like I do have a stand start, so let's try it. All right. Looks like I got it sealed up with the dart. And put 35 PSI in it this time. All right, we're back in business. Stan's dart to the rescue. Met up with Lifery and Shred in front of me. Shred and Slash. Do some option lines right here. Oh yeah. Get dark. Woo. Woo! Yeah. Oh yeah. There we go. That felt better. So it's pretty uh, intuitive, just like the slash for jumping. Hey, Northeasters. Woo! Yeah! Ah! Took like a champ. Want to get some tech again and hopefully not blow the tire again. Oh, I felt it again. Smack the rim running like 30 35 psi. Those dumb tires. Definitely notice the head angle on this thing is pretty dang good at 64 degrees. Oh my gosh, dude, this front tire. Ah, it's stressing, it's stressing me out. It's stressing me out. The thing I just figured out on that run is the brakes, too powerful for these tires because I was sliding my front tire down that slab and it scared the living piss out of me. Now I have like zero confidence in this tire. I definitely feel like I'm on a 140 bike, but it feels good. Also being super cautious to into the rim dink. I don't know if you heard that. I'm running 35 PSI now. Well, that's the, basically the gist of the initial impressions in the downhill performance. Granted, you know, it's a lot to handle at Highland Mountain Bike Park. First ride on a new bike in the rain, closing day, in the mud. But I think the uh, the only factors right now are, the limiting factors are the tires. 
which probably fine for trail riding. Enduro riding, ooh, sketchy. All right, so initial impressions of this thing are pretty dang good. It goes downhill pretty well for a trail bike, 140 trail bike. This is Highlands done for the year. It's 407, the lift is stopped running. But uh, what little pedaling we did, because Volpine and Stump Line have some decent pedaling getting out, this thing's pretty much a rocket going uphill. So next up, part two of the video, we're gonna go to the trails. We're gonna see how it handles all the uh, like regular trail riding and some local downhills and some climbs and stuff like that and see how it goes. The tire is pretty much my fault. I'm running a single ply tire at a downhill park, riding like a hack and uh, on a trail bike. But you know what, it is what it is. Plug the tire, got a couple more runs in and then we're gonna go. So stay tuned, part two, and we'll check the, how this thing does on the trails. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Part two of the Truck Fuel EX video. Welcome back to part two of the Fuel EX review. Out here, Pine Hills. Oh, wasn't expecting that. Here's the pedal portion, trail ride portion of this review video. You may notice my front tire is a little bit different. I could not stand running those baloney skins. Woo. So I have switched them out to the tried and true Victoria. No more baloney skins. No more baloney skins. I couldn't do it after flatting at Highland and then I was riding Low Drake it with just a trail ride and I was slipping off every single rock and had to switch them out. We're gonna go through, see how it pedals, see how it does descents, see how it does trail rides. And so far, I'm liking it a lot. Ryan in front of me is on the old version, Gen 5 Feely X. And the comment we already made out of the gate is that his bike feels at least three pounds lighter. A little trials -y stuff. Oh, dude. I feel like I'm gonna land on that rock. I did land on that rock. It sent my fork right and slapped the stanchions. No. <laughs> what is going on up there? Now we got the technical climb portion. So far, one thing that I noticed is that the bars are really wide. I think they're 820s. And wheels are stiff. Oh, oh. Technical climb take two. Oh. That doesn't sound great. Oh yeah. Easy peasy. Oh. <laughs> right, ah. right on the rock. Yeah, right on the rock. Man, just... and there's the bottom again. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. That's my nice Oh yeah, though. look at it. bottom again. I need half a token. Yeah. I'm almost, look at it. I'm a debonair. Three letters for this bike, F-U-N. She is fun. Oh. Yeah! 
Yes! Oh. Yeah! Phew! All right, so what did I think of this bike? So as you know, this is the 2023 Trek Fuel X. It's a size medium large, it's the Gen 6. Um, it's the 9.8 XT built that I was riding. And I have to tell you, this is probably, and I'm not overstating this, this is probably the most fun bike I've ridden in a long time. I can only compare it to maybe the closest comparison would be something like a pivot switchblade or something like that. It's like kind of the Swiss army knife of bikes where in a stock form, you don't have to do anything to it. And it's like a Swiss army knife right out of the box. It's 140 mil suspension in the rear, 150 mil suspension in the front. You've got, you know, stout 36, uh, a Fox 36 stanchion in the front. And it just, it pedals like a trail bike, almost like a cross country bike. So let's go through the pros and the cons and what I thought about this. And we'll go through the spec real quick. Um, I have to say, like I said, this is my favorite bike I've ridden in a long time. It pedals really well. It doesn't lose much in pedaling capability over to a top fuel. It really doesn't, but it gives you that much more plushness. And I honestly think it's better at tech because it's got a little bit more squish in the back and you can go faster through tech than you could with a top fuel. Um, and then on the downs and even on smooth climbs, it doesn't really give a lot away to the top fuel. Um, it's very efficient. It pedals really well. And then when you point it downhill, when you, once you get to the top of the hill, it's way faster. It's way better than like a top fuel or something like that. And it's kind of the perfect, you know, overlap. It overlaps a little bit of the top fuel and it overlaps a little bit of the slash for descending, but it's still not a slash either. We gotta, I gotta kind of say that, like it doesn't descend as good as a slash. It just doesn't. It has 20 mil last front and rear it's less plush than a Trek uh, Slash. Um, so it's not a Slash. But could I see this being a one bike for somebody? Put a 160 fork on the front. Um, you can change the flip chip and put a coil on the back of this. And then I could see it being like a one, you know, a party bike for just about everything. Um, you could race light enduro on it. And you could also ride at trail bikes. You know, you wouldn't run a cross country race with it, but honestly, it'd be really sick. All right, so let's go through the spec um, to see exactly what this bike comes with. So one thing that I'm super impressed with is that it came with a full XT build. I mean, I mean full XT. Crank, cassette, um, derailleur, brakes, four piston XT brakes, the whole nine yards. It comes with Bontrager's Line Elite carbon rims, which are pretty heavy for what they are, but it is what it is. It comes with the Fox 36 Performance front fork and the Float X. The Float X is actually the replacement for the DPX2, which I find the Float X to be really, really good. I was really impressed. And I kept thinking, I'm like, would I upgrade the suspension on this bike? And my answer came back with no, probably not. It's got the fit grip damper, so it doesn't have the grip two damper in the front. Um, but for me, I'm a more set it, forget it kind of guy. I'm not really, you know, too worried about it. And honestly, going from the, you know, the, the performance elite to the factory, you don't really save any weight. There's a little bit of performance, there's a little bit of more adjustment, but for somebody that's just running it right out of the box, I don't really see that being a need. So the other thing that I didn't like, obviously, as you saw, I flatted really quickly and really easily um, with those stock Bontrager tires. I don't like them. They were down like scary in the wet going downhill. And I replaced them with the Vittoria Agaro in the rear and I got a Metallo in the front. And let me tell you, worlds of difference um, in traction. It's crazy. The one thing, a couple things that I didn't like about this bike. 
I did not like the one piece handlebar setup. I know some people do, it's pretty light according to the specs. I think it's only like 270 grams for stem and bars, which is pretty impressive, but I can't, I can't mount a light to it. I can't, it's a misshapen bar. It's not a regular shaped bar. It's not a 35 millimeter. It's like almost like squarish tubing. They do make a, you know, piece that's gonna go on the front that you can mount a light to or something like that. But it's just another proprietary thing that we just didn't need, I don't think. I didn't need it anyway, because all of my existing lights are bar mount. Um, and all kinds of other things that I do are bar mount as well. Computers and stuff like that. So I just, I don't know, I'm pro I would probably swap that out. Everything else, um, man, like I said, it's just a super fun, capable bike. And I guess that's pretty much the whole spec. Um, again, I've never had a complaint about the Bontrager dropper posts. They just work. The, the lever is definitely something to be desired. Um, leave something to be desired and I would definitely replace that with like a race face or something like that. But in the end, it worked just for this demo. So let's go ahead and talk about the geometry and all the different adjustments you can make. You can get a flip chip here that you can change for running different types of suspension, one more progressive and one more linear, I would think. You can run a coil, you know, it gives you the settings so you can run a coil or air. Um, and then you've got different cups you can buy. You can change it almost by two degrees. I run it in the stock form, which was 64 and a half degrees. You can go all the way to 63 and a half, or you can go up to 65 and a half, depending on how you want the bike to ride. Um, so there's a multitude of adjustments. So that's why it's kind of confusing when you go on Trek's website and look at the geometry chart. Um, but the stock form is, you know, 64 and a half, and it does come in low, the low position, I believe, and the more progressive for an air shock. So who is this bike for? Honestly, I think that this bike is for anybody that just wants to have fun. Like you want to go out on a mountain bike and you want the most fun experience that you can have in the woods, whether you're riding trail, cross country, or doing like light enduro, or you go into like do blue square trails at the bike park or whatever, or even black diamond jump trails and stuff like that. The only place where this would get you a little bit of trouble is like double black diamond chunk um, and stuff like that. You can pick your way down because the geometry allows you to do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, this bike is just for the person that just wants to have a lot of fun on their mountain bike. And I can honestly say like, out of all the bikes I've ridden over the years, probably four or five years now, it's probably the most fun bike I've thrown a leg over. And that's saying a lot because who doesn't want a snappy, fast trail, uh, bike? When you get on the pedals, it feels like all your power is going right there and it's not getting absorbed in the suspension. But yet you're also able to climb up to a down and then go down and you're not losing any performance really on the majority of trails that we all love to ride. You know, we all like to have these things where we're like, oh, you know, I'm not riding that trail unless it's a double black diamond. But let's be honest, the blue square trails are probably the most popular trails in the world. Like you're gonna ride that type of trail more, I would say, than a double black diamond or something like that. Um, I find myself most of the time like warming up on a blue square anyway. And honestly, like that's what this trail bike, that's what this bike is, the Fuel EX Gen 6. It's so much fun. Um, and I don't think anybody would be disappointed. I think this build came in at 32 and a half pounds. Um, and I want to say it's probably 33 with pedals. So it's not the lightest, but if you built this up um, as a light bike, I think you probably have the most fun on this bike than a lot of the, lot, probably a lot of other bikes in the market. Anyway, that's the review. Let me know what you think down in the comments. As usual, hit that like, hit the subscribe button. If you wanna support the channel, head over to Patreon, consider joining, supporting the channel. All this equipment costs a lot of money, especially now I've got the wireless mics and trying this out. And uh, I'm going inside because it's freezing. Um, it's only about 16 degrees out right now and I'm having trouble talking without shivering. <laughs> so as usual, 
hit the like, subscribe button, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.